chapter 18. I believe. Chapter 18? Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Lord, give me the strength to uh, read these names if they come across fluently and with elegance. I read first, guys. We're at uh, Joshua. If, if you want to start it over fresh, we can, Ethan, if, that, if that'll save you some editing time. Nah, uh, that's cool. Okay. We're at Joshua chapter 18 at verse 1. Here we go. And Abram rose and did all that God had ordered him. And he took the men of his household and those brought with his money, and he circumcised them as the Lord commanded him. I don't know if y'all see what I'm doing. And, and there was no one left whom he did not circumcise. And Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised in the flesh of their foreskin. 13 years old was Ishmael when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. I'm going to pause here, guys. We've been out here clearing this land and foraging from the tops of these trees, drinking the teas and whatnot. And I'm telling y'all, before I did that, I would not be able to read these words. I'm telling you, I just noticed that. Yeah, I think that is. Listen. Yeah. I'm not kidding. You don't, you don't, you don't see me with no glasses. No. And I can see it. I I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> There is a God, the, the God, and, and he gave us medicine. And that medicine is not in that pharmacy because it's at the tops of these trees and at the bottom of these roots. And I'm going to keep forging. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, have mercy. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord of Abraham, Isaac, the Lord. <laughs> hey, man, I, I can't even. This is pretty good. And then the third day, Abram went out of his tent and sat on the door to enjoy the heat of the sun during the pain of his flesh. And the Lord appeared to him in the plain of Merom and sent three of his ministering angels to visit him. And he was sitting at the door of the tent and he lifted his eyes and saw, and lo, three men were coming from a distance. And he rose up and ran to meet them. And he bowed down to them and brought them into his house. He said to them, if now I have favor, if I have found favor in your sight, turn in and eat a morsel of bread. And he pressed them that they turn in, and he gave them water and they washed their feet. And he placed them under a tree at the door of his tent. And Abraham ran and took a calf tender and good, and he hastened to kill it, and gave it to his servant Eleazar to dress. And Abraham came to Sarah and to the tent and he said to her, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal. Knead it and make cakes to cover the pot containing the meat. And she did so. <laughs> and Abraham hastened and brought before them butter and milk, beef and mutton, and gave it before them to eat before the flesh of the calf was significantly done. And they did eat. And when they had done eating, one of them said to him I will re I will return to thee to three no I will return to thee according to the time of life and Sarah thy wife shall have a son and the men afterward departed and went their ways to the places to which they were sent in those days all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah and of the whole five cities were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord and they provoked the Lord with their abominations. And they strengthened and acted abominably and scornfully before the Lord. And their wickedness and crimes were in those days great before the Lord. And they had in their land a very intensive valley, extensive valley, about half a day's walk. And in there were mountains of water and a great deal of herbage herbage a great deal of herbage surrounding the water herbage herbage that's good and all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah went there four times in the year with their wives and children and all belonging to them and they rejoiced there with the, with timbrels and dances and in the time of rejoicing they would all rise and lay hold of their neighbor's wives, huh? And some, the virgin, the virgin daughters of their neighbors, and they enjoyed them. 
And each man saw his wife and daughter in the hands of his neighbor. And they did not say a word. And they did so from morning to night. And they afterward returned home, each man to his house, and each woman to her tent. So they always did four times in the year. Also, when a stranger came into their city and brought goods which he had purchased with a view to dispose of them, the people of these cities would assemble men, women, and children, young and old, and go to the man and take his goods by force, giving a little to each man until there was an end to all the goods of the owner which he brought into the land. And if the owner of the goods quarreled with them, saying, what is this work which you have done to me? Then they would approach to one, to him one by one, and each would show him the little which he took and taunt him, saying, I only took that little which thou didst give me. And when he heard this from them, from them all, he would arise and go forth from them in sorrow and bitterness of soul. When they would all arise and go after him and drive him out of the city with great noise and tumult. And there was a man from the country of Elam who was leisurely going on the road, seated upon his ass with a fine mantle of diverse colors and the mantle was bound with a cord upon the ass. Sunset in the evening, and he returned there in order to abide during the night. But no one would let him into his house. And at that time, there was in Sodom a wicked and mischievous man, one skillful to do evil. And his name was Hedad. And he lifted up his eyes and saw the traveler, the traveler in the street of the city. And he came to him and said, Whence comest thou, and whither? Thus thou go. And the man said to him, I am traveling from Hebron to Elam, where I belong. And as I passed the sun set, and no one would suffer me to enter his house, though I have bread and water, and also straw and provender for my ass, and I am short of nothing. And he dad answered and said to him, All that thou sh shalt want shall be supplied by me. But in the street thou shalt no, not abide all night. And Hadad brought him to his house, and he took off the mantle from the, from the ass with the cord, and brought them to his house. And he gave the ass straw and provender, whilst the traveler ate and drank in Hadad's house. And he abode there that night. And in the morning the traveler rose up early to continue his journey. When Hadad said to him, Wait! Comfort thy heart with a morsel of bread, and then go. And the man did so. He remained with him, and they both ate and drank together during the day. When the man rose up to go, and Hadad said to him, Behold, now the day is declining. Thou hadst better remain all night, that thy heart may be comforted. And he pressed him, so that he tarried there all night. And on the second day, he rose up early to go away. When Hadad pressed him, saying, Comfort thy heart with a morsel of bread, and then go. And he remained and ate with him also the second day. And then the man rose up to continue his journey. And his dad said to him, Behold, now the day is declining. Remain with me to comfort thy heart, and in the morning rise up early and go thy way. And the man would not remain, but rose and saddled his ass. And whilst he was saddling his ass, the wife of his dad said to him, said to her husband, Behold, this man with us, this man has remained with us for two days, eating and drinking, and he has given us nothing. And now shall he go away from us without giving anything? And her dad said to her, Be silent. And the man saddled his ass to go, and he asked her dad to give him the cord and the mantle to tie it upon the ass. And her dad said to him, What sayest thou? And he said to him, that thou, my Lord, shalt give me the cord and the mantle made with divide, 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 diverse colors while thou doest conceal with thee in thy house.
take care of this. And Hadad answered the man, saying, This is the interpretation of thy dream. The cord which thou doest see means that thy life will be lengthened out like a cord. And having seen the mantle colored with all sorts of colors means that thou shalt have a vineyard in which thou wilt plant trees of all fruit. And the traveler answered, saying, Not so, my lord, for I was awakened when I gave thee the cord, and also a mantle woven with different colors, which thou doest take off the ash to put them by to put them by for me. And he dad answered and said, Surely I told thee the interpretation of thy dream, and it is a good dream, and this is the interpretation thereof. Now the sons of men give four pieces of silver, which is my charge for interpreting dreams. And thee, only I require three pieces of silver. And the man was provoked at the words of Hedad. And he cried bitterly. And he brought Hedad to a she-wreck, judge of Saddam. And the man laid his cause before she the judge. When he dad replied saying it is not so but thus the matter stands and the judge said to the traveler this man he dad telleth the truth for he is famed in the city for the act for the accurate interpretation of dreams and the man cried at the word of the judge and he said not so my lord for it was in the day that I gave him the cord and the mantle which was upon the ash in order to put them by in his house. And they both dis disputed before the judge. And the, the one saying, thus the matter was, and the other declining otherwise. And Hadad said to the man, give me four pieces of silver that I charge for my interpretation of dreams. I will not make any allowance and give me the expense of the four meals that thou didst eat in my house. And the, and, the, and the man said to Hedad, Truly I will pay thee for what I ate in thy house. Only give me the cord and mantle which thou didst conceal in thy house. And Hedad replied before the judge and said to the man, Did I not tell thee the interpretation of thy dream? The cord means that the day shall be prolonged like a cord. And the mantle that thou wilt have a vineyard in which thou wilt plant all kinds of fruit trees. This is the proper interpretation of thy dream. Now give me the four pieces of silver that I require as a compensation, for I will make thee no allowance. And the man cried at the words of he dad, and they both quarreled before the judge. And the judge gave orders to his servants, who drove them heart rash rushly from the house. And they went away quarreling from the judge. When the people of Saddam heard them, they gathered about them, and they exclaimed against the stranger, and they drove him rashly, rushly, rashly from the city. And the man continued his journey upon his ass with bitterness of soul, lamentating and weeping. And whilst he was going along, he wept at what had happened to him in the corrupt city of Sodom. Goodness. Away from that for Robin. Hey, that's some good people. The whole said, city's with it. He said, hey, man, you, you're drunk. I told you you're drunk. He said, what are you talking about? I'm like, what? I was awake. Man, what are you? You were asleep. What are you I, I done told you you're drunk. What the He told you the truth. Give me what I see. Hey, that should just tell you anybody offers you something. 1044. 1044. Uh, yeah. I already ate. Yeah, you got to be careful, man. Cause I'm fasting, man. For me, I'm fasting. Mom, you good, brother. I appreciate the offer, bro. You sure? Yeah, man. Shit, don't even let them know you're from another town. They gonna know. That's his first mistake. They gonna know. They, they, can, they, they can see it yeah, in his they face. They can see it from oh, Just from so. small this, towns, they know everybody. They say, oh, never seen you before. That's right. <laughs> That's why y'all ganged up on him. Man, man, get this stranger out of here. You're not one of us. Stranger danger. Stranger danger. Or stranger, somebody we can beat. Stranger, you're in danger. We got as a victim. That's crazy. Everybody else is like, yo, 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 yo. Yeah, he's right, man. Get out of here, man. 
Yeah, that is to me that one lie. That lie. See, that lie is something that very dangerous. Tough to solve. And it I'm misconstrues everybody's mindset. It's off of the lie. Damn, it's off of the man's kind of people. They all believe it. And everybody believes it. The whole city. I mean, they was already wicked anyway. And they mistreated me. Watch out that is bad. I tell you what, something must be up with this verse because we keep reading this over and over. Yeah, I was thinking my we can't escape. We can't escape this. Yeah. It keeps coming up. It must be a lesson we need to get bust yeah. through. I mean, yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, I said the same thing. I said, no, I done read this about three times. <laughs> you know? Exactly what I was thinking in my mind, too. I was like, well, I, I'm not mad at it. No, I wasn't either. I said, I'm going to read it again. <laughs> The more times you read the scriptures, you get each time you read it, you get something else out of it. They say three times a day, that's why in the commercials they always say the number three times. Call like, when 800? 55443. Really? Call again. At 800, 55443. That ain't a Sigmund Freud technique, is it? Once again, call again at 800443. That's true, man. They do try to repetition. And it get right in your mind. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Where that number come from? Your turn, young man. Chapter 19. 19, man. Yeah. Right, I'm going to start. In the cities of, all right, chapter 19. And the cities of Sodom had four judges to four cities. And these were the names. Sarag in the city of Sodom. Shark, Sharkad in Mora. Zabnak in Adma. And Minan in Zeboyim. And Elizer, Abraham's servant, applied to them different names. And he converted Sarak to Chakra, and Sharka to Shakurar, and Zignan to Dezobin, and Minan to Matz Lodin. Just off the bat, right there, you see how sometimes people have more than one name? That right there would be how history sometimes can be misconstrued, too, depending on who's giving them interpretation. <laughs> you know, well, there's a thing in America, man, where they AK you, AK you. Yeah. But if you go to jail, they want to know all of those names. Yeah. Oh. They want to know all those, and they document them. That's true. You know? They 13th minute amendment you to death. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and where is that one you pulled up at? Yeah, verse 3. And by desire of their four judges, the people of Sod Sodom and Gomorrah had beds erected in the streets of the city. And if a man came to these places, they laid hold of him and brought him to one of their beds, and by force made him lie, made him to lie in them. And as he lay down, three men would stand at his head and three at his feet and measure him by the length of the bed. And if the man was less than the less than the bed, these six men would stretch him at the end, and when he cried out to them, they would not answer him. And if he was longer than the bed, they would draw together the two sides of the bed at each end until the man had reached the gates of death. And if they continued to cry out to them, and if he continued to cry out to them, they would answer him, saying, Thus it shall be done to a man that cometh into our land. <laughs> And when, all, and when men heard all these things that the people of the cities of Sa Saddam did, they refrained from coming there. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. yeah. God. That's a version of really in the stretch. You see where they got their techniques from. Exactly. And, and, and when a poor man came to their land, they would give him silver and gold and cause a proclamation in the whole city not to give him a morsel of bread to eat. And if the stranger remained there some days and died from hunger, not having been able to obtain a morsel of bread, then at his death all the people of the city would come and take their gold, their silver and gold which they have given to him. Basically just have him walking around like a clown. Right. So you got all this money but you can't buy nothing. Hey, this is Sawyerville. Yeah. Wow. That is after you get murked. Yeah, it's cliche. You're going to lose this body. Yeah, you can't lose him. No wonder. <laughs> See, they just say God destroyed it. They didn't tell you everything they were doing. In the yeah, city. it wasn't just gayness. Nah, they were really some, they were really taking it to the next degree. 
And those that could recognize the silver or gold which they had given him took it back. And at his death they also stripped him of his garments, and they would fight about them. And he that prevailed over his neighbor took them. <laughs> they would after that carry him and bury him under some of the shrubs in the desert. So they did so they did all the days to anyone that came to them and died in their land. And in the course of the time of time, Sarah sent Eliza to Sodom to see Lot and to inquire after his welfare. And Eliza went to Sodom, and he met a man of Sodom fighting with a stranger. And the man of Sodom stripped the poor man of all his clothes and went away. And this poor man cried to Eliza, Eliezer. Oh, Eliezer, and su supplicated his favor on account of what the man of Sodom had done to him. And he said to him, why dost thou, thou act thus to the poor man who came to thy land? And the man of Saddam answered Eli Eliezer, Eliezer. Eliezer, saying, Is this man thy brother, or have the people of Saddam made thee a judge this day, that thou speakest about this man? And Eliezer, Eliezer. El Eliezer strove with the man of Saddam on account of the poor man. And when Eliezer approached to recover the poor man's clothes from the man of Saddam, he hastened and with a stone smote Eliezer in the forehead. Man, excuse me. A lot of people say uh, Sodom in the name. Sodom? Sodom. I mean, it's just a familiar way I've heard it. Sodom. Yeah. That's because of the that's because of the, the KJV translation. Mm. Other times it says, like on my side, it says Amorah. Uh, but in, in uh, uh, Hebrew, before that, it would be Amorah. So it, it's just the different dialect. Yeah. Amorah? Yeah. Amorah. Yeah. Yeah. Amorah. That almost sounds like Amorah. Yeah. Because that's what Sodom and Amorah was in. Um, it's in, uh, it's part of um, Canaan. Because Canaan is the forefather of Cush. You know? mm. Egypt and stuff. I'm sorry, sir. Um, 17. 17. And the blood flowed copiously from Eliezer's forehead. And when the man saw the blood, he caught hold of Eliezer, saying, Give my hire, give me my hire for having rid thee of this bad blood that was in thy forehead. <laughs> for such is the custom and the law in our land. <laughs> <laughs> and Eliezer said to him, Thou hast wounded me and requirest me to pay thee thy hire. And Eliezer would not hearken to the words of the man of Sodom. And the man laid hold of Eliezer and brought him to Shakra, the judge of Sodom, for judgment. And the man spoke to the judge, saying, I beseech thee, my lord, thus has this man done. For I smote him with a stone that the blood flowed from his head, his forehead, and he is unwilling to give me my hire. And the judge said to Eliezer, This man speaketh truth to thee, give him his hire. For this is the custom in our land. And Eliezer heard the words of the judge, and he lifted up a stone and smote the judge. <laughs> and, the stone, <laughs> and the stone struck on his forehead, and the blood fo flowed copiously from the forehead of the judge. And Eliezer said, If this then is the custom in your land, give thou unto this man what I should have given him. For this has been thy decision. Thou didst decree it. And Eliezer left the man of Sodom with the judge, and he went away. Wow. He said, what? Okay. Hey, okay. Right. You pay him. <laughs> you put oh, them man. on him. Hey, you give him the money I owe. <laughs> right. Oh, man, that was pretty good. Yeah. I hope he got out of town, though. Hey, you see, good yeah. God. Yeah, that was good. I'm surprised he let him out of his sight. Me well, too. He probably hey. respected him. Nobody no, about that respect. He had to, hey, look, he uh, had to he be like, leaving dust behind him rolling. And Eliezer <laughs> left the man of Sodom with the judge, and he went away. And when the kings of Elam had made war with the kings of Sodom, the kings of Elam captured all the property of Sodom, and they took Lot captive with his property. And when it was told to Abraham, he went and made war with the kings of Elam. And he recovered from their hands all the property of Lot, as well as the property of Sodom. At that time, the wife of Lot bare him a daughter, and he called her name Pal Palti, saying, Because God had delivered him 
and his whole household from the kings of Elam. And Paltith, uh, daughter of Lot, grew up. And one of the men of Sodom took her for a wife. And a poor man came into the city to seek a maintenance. And he remained in the city some days. And all the people of Sodom caused a proclamation of their custom not to give this man a morsel of bread to eat until he dropped dead upon the earth. And they did so. And Paltith, the daughter of Lot, saw this man lying in the streets, starved with hunger, and no one would give him anything to keep him alive. And he was just upon the point of death. And her soul was filled with pity on account of the man, and she fed him secretly with bread for many days, and the soul of this man was revived. But when she went forth to fetch water, she would put the bread in the water pitcher. And when she came to the place where the poor man was, she took the bread from the pitcher and gave it to him to eat. So she did many days. And all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah wondered how this man could bear starvation for so many days. And they said to each other, This can only be that he eats and drinks, for no man can bear starvation for so many days, or live as this man hath, without even changing, without even his countenance changing. And three men concealed themselves in the place where the poor man was stationed, to know who it was that brought him bread to eat. And Paltith, daughter of Lot, went forth that day to fetch water. <coughs> And she put bread into her pitcher of water, and she went to draw water by the poor man's place. And she took out the bread from the pitcher and gave it to the poor man, and he ate it. And the three men saw what Palti did to the poor man, and they said to her, It is thou who has supported him, and therefore he has not starved, nor changed in the appearance, nor died like the rest. And the three men went out of the place in which they were concealed, and they seized Palti, and the bread which was in the poor man's hand. And they took Palteth and brought her before the ju their judges. And they said to them, Thus did she do, and it was she who supplied the poor man with bread. Therefore did he not die all this time. Now therefore declare to us the punishment due to this woman for having transgressed our law. And the people of Sodom and Gomorrah assembled and kindled a fire in the street of the city. And they took the, the woman and cast her into the fire, and she was burned to ashes. Oh, jeez. And in the city of Adma, there was a woman to whom they did the like. For a traveler came into the city of Adma to abide there all night with the intention of going home in the morning. And he sat opposite of the door of the young woman's father to remain there as the sun had set when he had reached that place. And the young woman saw him sitting by the door of the house. And he asked her for a drink of water. And she said to him, Who art thou? And he said to her, I was this day going on the road and reach here when the sun set. So I will abide here all night, and in the morning I will arise and continue my journey. And the young woman went into the house and fetched the man bread and water to eat and drink. And this affair became known to the people of Adma. And they assembled and brought the young woman before the judges, that they should judge her for this act. And the judge said, The judgment of death must pass upon this woman, because she transgressed our law. And this, therefore, is the decision concerning her. And the people of those cities assembled and brought out the young woman and anointed her with honey from head to foot, as the judge had decreed. And they placed her before a swarm of bees, which then were in their hives. And the bees flew upon her and stung her that her whole body was swelled. And the young woman cried out on account of the bees, but no one took notice of her or pitied her. And her cries, and her cries ascended to the heavens. The Lord was provoked at this, and all at all the works of the cities of Sodom, for they had abundance of food and tr had tranquility amongst them, and still would not sustain the poor and the needy. And in those days their evil doings and sins became great before the Lord. And the Lord sent for two of the angels that had come to Abraham's house to destroy Sodom and its cities. And the angels rose up from the door of Abraham's tent after they had eaten and drunk, and they reached Sodom in the evening. And Lot was then sitting in the gate of Sodom. And when he saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed down great he bowed down to the to the ground. And he pressed them greatly and brought them into his house. And he gave them victuals which they ate. And they abode all bless you, bless you, God bless you. And they abode all night in his house. And the angels said to Lot, Arise, go forth from this place, thou and all belonging to thee, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of this city. For the Lord will destroy this place. And the angels laid hold upon the hand of Lot, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hands of his children. 
and they brought him forth and set him without the city. Skip, skip. Oh. And all belonging to him. And all belonging to him, and they, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. And they said to Lot, Escape for thy life. And he fled and all belonging to him. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah and upon all these cities brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew these cities, all the plain and all the inhabitants of the city, and that which grew upon the ground. And Addo, the wife of Lot, looked back to see the destruction of the city, for her compassion was moved on account of her daughters who remained in Sodom, but they did not go, they did not go with her. And when she looked back, she became a pillar of salt, and it is yet in that place until this day, unto this day. And the oxen which stood in that place daily licked up the salt to the extremities of their feet, and in the morning it would spring forth afresh, and they licked, and they again licked it up unto this day. I'd like to see it as well. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Not the salt, but I have seen scientists go to where uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was. It was still, the sulfur is still there. They would take a lot and burn it and watch it. It was still burning. Hmm. I haven't seen anything in the salt city, though. They might they probably have anything in the salt city. Don't know. Bless you, Jesus. And the, and the oxen stood in, the, in that place daily, licked up the salt to their. Oh, I saw that. And Lot and his two daughters, wait, and Lot and two of his daughters that remained with him fled and escaped to the cave of Adullam, and they remained there for some time. Ah, here, man. Ah. The heck? Yeah, here. Don't swish it. I ain't just gonna stay away from it. I ain't worried about you. And Lot and two of his daughters remained, and Lot and two of his daughters that remained with him fled and escaped to the cave of Adullam, and they remained there for some time. And Abraham rose up early in the morning to see what had been done to the cities of Sodom. And he looked and beheld the smoke of the cities going up like the smoke of a furnace. And Lot and his two daughters remained in the cave, and they made their father drink wine. And they lay with him, for they said there was no man upon earth that could raise up seed from them. For they thought that the whole earth was destroyed. And they both lay their, and they both lay with their father, and they conceived and bare sons. The firstborn called the name of her son Moab, saying, "From my father did I conceive, and he is the father of the Moabites unto this day." And the second, and the younger also called her son Benami, he is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. And after this, Lot and his two daughters went away from there. And he dwelt on the other side of Jordan with his two daughters and their sons. And the sons of Lot grew up, and they went and took themselves wives from the land of Canaan. And they begat children, and they were fruitful and multiplied. <clears throat> I wonder what lineage of people are the Moabs, Moabites, and the, uh, the I guess, Ammonites? Am Am Ammonites. That's interesting. Nice. Uh, what time? It's uh, 1104. Yeah. You got, you got a tune? Mm -hmm. Honestly, no. Well, you can go Roman, I mean, Roman yeah. and Godwin. Yeah, if y'all you want to put oh, someone else's phone, that would be cool. Well, let's knock it out, eh? Ain't nobody going to press you to open that door but you. Let's, right. let's finish this. We're right. in it to win it, guys. We're uh, in 20. It's 20. 20, yeah. How long is it? It's uh, twice not that long. long. Yeah, it's not that long. Yeah, in 20, in 20, eat it up. 21 in the new year. That was pretty, yeah, we can all read pretty well, so. Okay. Right. Let's get do it. it. Get in there. All right, chapter 20, verse 1. And at that time, Abraham journeyed from the place of Mamre, and he went to the land of Palestine, and he dwelt in Gerar. And it was in the 25th year of Abraham's being in the land of Canaan. In the 100th year of the life of Abraham, that he came to Gerar in the land of the Palestinians. And when they entered the land, he said to Sarah his woman, Say you are my sister to anyone that shall ask you, in order that we may escape the evil of the inhabitants of the land. And as Abraham was dwelling in the land of the Palestinians, the servants of Abimelech, king of the Palestinians, saw that Sarah was exceedingly beautiful, and they asked Abraham concerning her, and he said, She is my sister. 
and the servants of Abimelech went to Abimelech, saying, A man from the land of Canaan is come to dwell in the land, and he has a sister that is exceeding fair. And Abimelech heard the words of his servant, who praised Sarah to him, and Abimelech sent his officers, and they brought Sarah to the king. And Sarah came to the house of Abimelech, and the king saw that Sarah was beautiful, and she pleased him exceedingly. And he approached her and said to her, What is that man to you, with whom you did come to our land? And Sarah answered, and said, He is my brother, and he came from the land of Canaan to dwell wherever we can find a place. And Abimelech said to Sarah, Behold, my land is before you. Place your brother in any part of this land that pleases you, and it will be our duty to exalt and elevate him above all the people of the land, since he is your brother. And Abimelech sent for Abraham, and Abraham came to Abimelech. And Abimelech said to Abraham, Behold, I have given orders that you shall be honored as you desire on account of your sister Sarah. And Abraham went forth from the king, and the king's present followed him. As that even as that evening time before men lie down to rest, the king was sitting upon his throne, and a deep sleep fell upon him, and he lay upon the throne and slept till morning. And he dreamed that an angel of Yahweh came to him with a drawn sword in his hand, and the angel stood over Abimelech and wished to slay him with the sword. And the king was terrified in his dream and said to the angel, And what have I sinned against you that you come and slay me with your sword? And the angel answered and said to Abimelech, Behold, you found the count of the woman which you did yesterday night bring to your house, for she is a married woman, the woman of Abraham from who came to your house. Now therefore, return that man his woman, for she is his woman. And should you not return, know that you will surely die, you and all belonging to you. And on that night, there was a great outcry in the land of the Palestine, and the inhabitants of the land saw the figure of a man standing with a drawn sword in his hand, and he smote the inhabitants of the land with the sword. Yeah, he continued to smite them. And the angel of the Lord smote the whole land of the Palestine in that night. And there was a great confusion in that night and on the following morning. And every wound was closed. And all their issues and the hand of Yahweh was upon them on the account of Sarah, the woman of Abraham, whom Abimelech had taken. And in the morning, in the morning, Abimelech rose with terror and confusion and with a great dread. And he sent and had his servants called in. He related his dream to them, and the people were greatly afraid. And one man standing, standing amongst the servants of the king answered the king, saying, O sovereign king, restore this woman to her man, for he is her man. For, like, for the like happened to the king of Misraim when this man came to Misraim. And he said concerning his woman, She is my sister, for such is his man of doing when he comes to dwell in a land which he is a stranger. And Pharaoh sent and took his woman for a woman. And Yahya brought upon him grievous plagues until he returned the woman to her man. Now therefore, O sovereign king, know what happened yesterday night to the whole land, for there was a very great consternation and great pain and lamentation. But we know that it was on account of the woman which you did take. Now therefore, restore this woman to her man, lest it, should, lest it should befall us as it did to Pharaoh, king of Mizraim and his subjects, and that we may not die. And Abimelech hastened and called, and had Sarah called for, and she came before him. And he had Abraham called for, and he came before him. And Abimelech said to them, What is this work you have been doing, and saying you are brother and sister, and I took this woman for a woman? And Abraham said, Because I thought I should suffer death on account of my woman. And Abimelech took flocks and herds, and men servants and maid servants, and a thousand pieces of silver. And gave them to Abraham, and he returned Sarah to him. And Abimelech said to Abraham, Behold, the whole land is before you, dwelling wherever you shall choose. And Abraham said, And Sarah, his woman, went forth from the king's presence with honor and respect, and they dwelt in the land, even in Gerar. And all the inhabitants of the land of the Palestine and the king's servants were still in pain through the plague which the angel had inflicted upon the whole night on the king's Sarah. And Abimelech sent for Abraham, saying, Pray now for your servants to Yahweh, or the high king, which is the Lord of hosts, that he may put away this mentality from amongst us. And Abraham prayed on the account of Abimelech and his subjects. And Yahweh heard the prayer of Abraham, and he healed Abimelech and all his subjects.
So the tale that they told was the, the tale of them doing it in Egypt, the same move. Mm -hmm. stopping me? Yeah. Did you read? Mm -hmm. No, Roman didn't read yet. Good. No, I was just checking the camera. Oh, yeah, Roman didn't read. No, I'm not leaving. I'm just making okay, sure it's still I'm sorry. Recording. Yeah, Roman didn't read. Yeah, this is my sis, because you're not finna smoke me in and get her and go crazy on him. No, 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 no. Man, that's some stressful, uh, that's some, that's tension right there. It is, and that's methodical thinking too, man. He said, look, say this right now, hey, you <laughs> we're gonna got, die. You don't got no time for her to be like, why? 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 Why do you want me to wait, say that? Wait, can you explain to yeah, me? Yeah, I'm not your sister. She's not even your sister, though. I'm why your, would you I'm lie? Your, why are you lying? It's not good to it's, lie. And then they go in there. Hey. Is that? Hey, is, <laughs> who is he to you? Oh, that's my husband. Kill him. Because now she's going to be a widow immediately. As soon as he, as soon as, now that she's he's dead, she's a widow. And she can become married to any man now. That woman is equally low. They are equally yoked. Equally yeah. yoked. She ain't say nothing. No, he said, hey, hey, I got it. He said, make me these three meals and knead them. Done. I ain't, I ain't hear no. I ain't hear no. What? You didn't, ask, you didn't ask me. You didn't ask me. He said, make it ready. Need it now. Haste. He said, make haste. Cake. Which means quick. He said, make it haste. Cake. Need them quick. She said, all right, babe. But is it, this is the right. <laughs> these are righteous men. Yeah. Okay, the, the 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 head of the man is the Lord. First and foremost. First and foremost. Okay. Chapter twenty-one. And it was at that time, at the end of the year, in four months of Abraham dwelling in the land of the Philistines in Gerar, that God visited Sarah, and the Lord remembered her, and she conceived and bare a son to Abraham. And Abraham called the name of the son which was born to him, which Sarah bare to him. Can I pause real quick? Uh, something just, uh, you remember the three men that came to Abraham? And it was yeah. only one that spoke to him? And then there was two of them that got sent to Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember, but remember the one that said, I will visit you at the time of life, when Sarah will bring you forth a child? But then here it explains who visited him during that time. It, it has me thinking certain things. So remember, he, he's two two men, two of men of the angels went to Sodom and Gomorrah. Not all three. And one of them said, "I will visit you." And the ones, the one didn't go, but two from the three went to go to Lot. But the one said, "I'm gonna come visit you later." And Sarah gets like, and then it speaks about at the time where she uh, is visited. And he got, and, and she he remember her. This is kind of, I, I find that very, very interesting. I'm not sure if y'all picking up what I'm putting down. I'm not. I, well, I'm the, there, there, were, there were three people, three ain't men that were sent to Abram's house. And he asked them all to come in. This is the ones he needed, made the groceries for. Mm -hmm. And two of them left. I, wasn't even, I didn't even catch that. Where'd the other one go? It didn't say about where that other one went. But the, that one was the only one that spoke. And he was like, hey, I'm going to come visit when Sarah comes at the time of night. And then those two went and slain everybody. And then this one, this is where she visited. I just, I was just, you know, I'm, 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 what I'm putting down is, you know, was that the creator that told Abraham that? And that came in the flesh that I'm going to speak to him? That's that's what I'm putting down. Right. Cause now, cause now, saying that uh, now that, that God visited Sarah and remember her, and she conceived, and the angel, the one who told him that, the, the, the first one, the only one that spoke. Does it say that the man visited her, or God Himself did? It says that God visited Sarah, but that that angel that spoke, <coughs> let me see if I can find it. Said within. Cause it, it, it puts in a, on my end, it puts that, that one in like a tablets. Oh. Let's see if I can find it.
It's a Joshua 18. I'm a, uh, it's at verse 9. Now I'm going to go back at verse 4. Because this is, I'm going to go back at verse 3 because that's important. What's it? Uh, 18. I'm going to start at verse 3. And it says, In that third day, Abraham went out his tent and sat at the door to enjoy the heat of the sun and doing the pain of his flesh. And it says specifically, and Yahweh appeared to him in the flame of memory, and sent him three of his ministry and angels to visit him. And was sitting at the at the door of the tent, he looked up his eyes and saw, and lo, three men were coming from a distance. And he rose up and ran to meet them, and he bowed down to them and brought them to his house. And he said to them, If I have not found favor in your sight, turn in and eat a morsel of bread. And he pressed them, and they turned in and gave him water, and they washed their feet. He placed him under the tree at the door of the of the tent. Aaron ran and took a calf, turned it good, and he hastened to kill it. He gave it to his servant Eliezer to dress it. And Aaron came to Sarah into the tent. <clears throat> he said to her, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes to cover the pot containing the meat. And she did so. And Aaron hastened and brought before them butter and milk, beef and mutton, and gave it before them to eat before the flesh of the calf was sufficiently done. They did eat. And when they had done eating, one of them said to him, I will return to you according to that time of life, and Sarah, your woman, shall have a son. And the men afterward departed and went their ways in the place to which they were sent out. And later on, it was only two that was uh, sent out to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah to go to Lot. Where does it say that at? Are you reading that? That's no, I'm not reading it now, but that's what I remember from uh, from who read that. But mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not Right now, it's saying at, at, at ten that all of them rolled out. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That's true. But um, I'm trying yeah, to but find one it. of them did say he was going to return. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find it where he went to lot. The two went to lot to grab grab the his his whole family. Mm -hmm. It was only two that came to grab lot. Was that Dolores? Or 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 uh what people say the Messiah himself. Well I think um in chapter eighteen, verse four, it just says um share his ministry angels. It is true as well. It is true as well. But, true as well. but I like I like the way you're thinking though. Yeah, it's good to it's good to understand what we're reading. I did. I yeah. did find a verse where he sent the two. This is a chapter nineteen, forty-five. And Yahweh sent the two of his angels that had come to Abraham's house to destroy Sodom and his cities. So only two of them went there. And the angels rose up from the door of Abraham's tent after they had eaten and drunk it, and they reached the dime in the evening. So only two of them left from uh, Abraham and went to the lot. That one, I'm not sure where he went. It doesn't explain. Yeah, only the only, but only two went to Lot. I think it is interesting how um, they just they appear as like just three people, but it's really like angels. angels. Yeah. Time at the end of the year, in four months, of Abraham's dwelling in the land of the in the land of the Philistines in Gerar, and God visited Sarah, and the Lord remembered her, and she conceived and bare a son to Abraham. And Abraham called the name of the son which was born to him, which Sarah bare him Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac at eight days old, as God had commanded Abraham to do, and to his seed after him. And Abraham was 100, and Sarah 90 years old, and Isaac was born to him. And the child grew up, and he was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast upon the, the day that Isaac was weaned. And Shem and Eber, and all the great people of the land, and Amalek, king of the Philistines, and his servants, and 
grew up and he was weaned Abraham made a great feast upon the day that Isaac was weaned and Shem and Eber and all the great people of the land and Amalek king of the Philistines and his servant and Bichol the captain of his host came to eat and drink and rejoice at the feast which Abraham made upon the day of his son Isaac's being weaned also Terah the father of Abraham and Nahor his brother came from Haran they and all belonging to them. For they greatly rejoiced in hearing that a son had been born to Sarah. And they came to Abraham, and they ate and drank at the feast which Abraham made upon the day of Isaac being weaned. And Terah and Nahor rejoiced with Abraham, and they remained with him many days in the land of the Philistines. At that time, Terah, the son of Reu, died in the first year of the birth of Isaac, son of Abraham. And all the days of Terub were 239 years when he died. And Ishmael, the son of Abraham, was grown up in those days. He was 14 years old when Sarah bare Isaac to Abraham. And God was with Ishmael, the son of Abraham, and he grew up. And he learned to use the bow and became an archer. And when Isaac was five years old, he was sitting with Ishmael at the door of the tent. And Ishmael came to Isaac and seated himself opposite to him. And he took the bow and drew it, and put the arrow in it, and intended to slay Isaac. And Sarah saw the act which Ishmael desired to do to her son Isaac, and it grieved her exceedingly on account of her son. And she sent for Abraham, and said to him, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for her son shall not be here with my son. So thus he did seek here. Here? Here. Here? Here. Here. Oh. For his son shall not be heir with my son. For thus did he seek to do unto him this day. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah, and he rose up early in the morning. And he took twelve loaves and a bottle of water, which he gave Hagar, and sent her away with her son. And Hagar went with her son to the wilderness. And they dwelt in the wilderness of Paran. <coughs> Excuse me. With the inhabitants of the wilderness, and Ishmael was an archer, and he dwelt in the wilderness a long time. And he and his mother afterward went to the land of Egypt, and they dwelt there. And Hagar took a wife for his son from Egypt, and her name was Meribah. And the wife of Ishmael conceived and bare four sons and two daughters. And Ishmael and his mother and his wife and children afterward went and returned to the wilderness. And they made themselves tents in the wilderness in which they dwelt. And they continued to travel and then to rest monthly and yearly. And God made Ishmael flocks and herds and tents on account of Abraham his father. And the man increased in cattle. And Ishmael dwelt in desert in the tents, traveling and resting for a long time. And he did not see the face of his father. And then some time after, Abraham said to, his, to Sarah, his wife, I will go and see my son Ishmael, for I have a desire to see him, for I have not seen him for a long time. And Abraham rode up upon one of his camels to the wilderness to seek his son Ishmael, for he heard that he was dwelling in a tent in the wilderness with all belonging to him. And Abraham went to the wilderness, and he reached the tent in Ishmael. Uh, he reached the tent of Ishmael about noon. He asked after Ishmael, he found the wife of Ishmael sitting in the tent with her children. And Ishmael, her husband, and his mother were not with them. And Abraham asked the wife of Ishmael, saying, Where has Ishmael gone? And she said, He has gone to the field to hunt. And Abraham was still mounted upon the camel, for he, was, he would not get off to the ground, as he had sworn to his wife Sarah that he would not get off from the camel. And Abraham said to Ishmael's wife, My daughter, give me a little water that I may drink, for I am fatigued from the journey. And Ishmael's wife answered and said to Abraham, We have neither water nor bread. And she continued sitting in the tent. 
him did not notice Abraham, neither did she ask him who he was. But she was beating her children in the tent, and she was cursing them. And she also cursed her husband Ishmael, and reproached him. And Abraham heard the words of Ish Ishmael's wife to her children, and he was very angry and displeased. And Abraham called to the woman to come out to him from the tent. And the woman came and stood opposite to Abraham, for Abraham was still mounted upon the camel. And Abraham said to Ishmael's wife, When thy husband Ishmael returneth home, say these words to him. A very old man from the land of the Philistines came hither to seek thee, and thus was his appearance and figure. And I did not ask him who he was, and seeing thou was not here, he spoke unto me and said, When Ishmael thy husband returneth, tell him, Thus did this man say, When thou comest home, put away his nail of the tent which thou hast placed here, and place another nail in its stead. And Abraham finished his instructions to the woman, and he turned and went off on the camel homeward. And after that, Ishmael came from chase he and his mother, and returned to the tent. And his wife spoke these words to him. A very old man from the land of the Philistines came to seek thee, and thus was his appearance and figure. I did not ask him who he was, and seeing thou was not home, he said to me, When thy husband cometh home, tell him, Thus saith the old man, Put away the nail of the tent which thou hast placed here, and place another nail in its seat. It said, And Ishmael heard the words of his wife, and he knew that it was his father, and that his wife did not honor him. And Ishmael understood his father's words that he had spoken to his wife, and Ishmael hearkened to the voice of his father. And Ishmael cast off that woman, and she went away. <laughs> and Ishmael afterward went to the land of Canaan, and he took another wife. And he brought her to his tent to the place where he then dwelt. And at the end of three years, Abraham said, I will go again and see Ishmael, my son, for I have not seen him for a long time. And he rode upon his camel and went to the wilderness. And he reached the tent of Ishmael about noon. And he asked after Ishmael and his wife came out of the tent. And she said, He is not here, my lord. And he has gone to hunt in the field and to feed the camels. And the woman said to Abraham, Turn in, my lord, into the tent and eat a morsel of bread. For, the, for thy soul must be worried on account of the journey. Mm -hmm. And Abraham said to her, I will not stop, for I am in a haste to continue my journey. But give me a little water to drink, for I have thirst. And the woman hastened and ran into the tent and brought out water and bread to Abraham, which she placed before him. And she urged him to eat, and he ate and drank, his, and his heart was comforted, and he blessed his son Ishmael. <laughs> and he finished his meal, and he blessed the Lord. And he said to Ishmael's wife, When Ishmael cometh home, say these words, A very old man from the land of the Philistines came hither and asked for thee, and thou wast not here, and I brought him out bread and water, and he ate and drank, and his heart was comforted. And he spoke these words to me, And Ishmael, <laughs> thy husband, cometh home, saying to him, The nail of the tent which thou hast is very good. Do not put it away from the tent. <laughs> and Abraham finished commanding the woman, and he rode off to his home to the land of the Philistines. And when Ishmael came to his tent, his wife went forth to meet him with joy and a cheerful heart. And she said to him, An old man came here from the land of the Philistines, and thus was his appearance. And he asked after thee, and thou wast not here. So I brought out bread and water, and he ate and drank, and his heart was comforted. And he spoke these words to me, And Ishmael thy husband cometh home, say to him, The nail of the tent which thou hast is very good, do not put it away from the tent. And Ishmael knew it was his father, and that his wife honored him, and the Lord blessed Ishmael. <laughs> Hey, wow. That is fire. <laughs> that is fire. Hey, that is, hey, I'm glad we read that one. He said, hey, hey, hey get, rid that 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 get rid of that nail. Get it out. Get rid of that nail. Get it out of here. Get it out of here. It's not a good nail. You you got got said, a bad but nail. this nail, hey, this is a, hey, hey. this nail right here going to hold it down. Hey, you did the, <laughs> hey, oh. hey now, now listen. 
You know what's crazy about all of this? Is uh, um, make my whole body online. That's what's crazy. Yeah, but but <laughs> now remember who who Hagar was. Mm -hmm. I mean, who who gave Hagar to Sarah? Right. The, uh, Pharaoh. Yeah. What was his name? He's back Close. in the game again. He's back. He just got casted out. Who got cast out? Some of the people. When? Yeah. Abraham told, him, told Ishmael to send that woman to you. They weren't dead. Did they have children? Did he have children by, by, by? Yeah, remember she was beating him and cursing him. See, and that's interesting too. They said, they said cursing them. What was she saying to these kids? I don't know. I'm pretty sure she wasn't saying what, shit. But where was Hagar? We're talking about Ishmael's wife that he scooped up, right? Maybe his wife. That's the woman that, that's the woman that his mom gave him, the first one. The, first, the one that was cursing his sons and him was the woman that uh, his mom gave him. And then when Abraham came, he said, get that woman out of here. Where's the mother, though? I don't know where Hagar is. Hagar's with Ishmael out on the, out on the on chase. The hunt? Yeah. Some interesting things are going on with uh, Ishmael C. I can't wait to keep reading. That is awesome. You know? But that woman, too. I can't remember. I don't know where his, the woman he just got came from. Where she's living. Yeah, but did it say where Hagar got the woman? Yeah, she, she's an Egyptian. The woman that he he made it with first was an Egyptian. I, I, have a, I already had it highlighted in my notes previously when I uh, first read it. Because that. That's a, a nation of people that scared to tell us to be mindful of. Somewhere or another, Egyptians are the Egyptians changed heritage. Something happened in Egypt that changed the whole lineage. Yeah. Something went down. It's still recording, guys. One of the king, one of the righteous king, the specific king. Duh. There's a lot of mystery going on in Egypt, fellas. I'm gonna go ahead and shut her down. Good oh, podcast, man. everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Like and subscribe. See you next time.